Howdy y'all and welcome back. AR pistols and giant fireballs. They go together like peanut butter and jelly, like peas and carrots. <laughs> and really, there's no way around it. Uh, especially when you're talking about 5.56 five, and really any barrel length under 16 inches. You're going to have some flame coming out. So when I put this together originally, I went for kind of a comp flash hider hybrid that after doing a little bit of researching seemed like it would, you know, be an adequate flash suppressor. It didn't really work out that way. And doing a little more poking around, came across an article, uh, kind of an older, it's about five years old, from The Truth About Guns. It was a flash hider shootout. And I'll put a link in the description down below. And... So the gist of it is, to get maximum flash suppression out of a 16-inch barrel, you're going to end up with a three- or four-prong flash hider design. Open-ended, either three-prong or four-prong. The problem with that for me is that they all ring to some degree or another. That open end, those prongs, We'll get a harmonic vibration through them, and they ring like a tuning fork, which just skeeves me out. <laughs> so, somewhere between maximum flash suppression and how much that ringing sound annoys me, I tried to find a flash suppressor that would help at least tone down the giant fireballs coming out of this 11 and a half inch pistol. And what I settled on was one from Yankee Hill Machine, you saw the stats there at the intro. Out of the 16-inch barrel, using a light meter, this muzzle device roughly, it was almost a third of the flash of the 2A armament one that I had on here before. Not quite a third, but well under half. If I can cut that flash in half on this, I will be happy. I'm not quite ready to move to a can yet. Uh, so here I are, and uh, I don't plan on shooting this from the prone a whole lot. So I'm, you know, I was open to the idea of having base, a basically open design all the way around. Everything, you know, is going to be a matter of compromise in the world of firearms. One quick point: I'm using a block, just a little mag block, in my super affordable. Blue vice. This is like a $40 vice. If you're into firearms and tinkering at all, this is an investment worth making. If you live in an apartment and you don't have a workshop or a place where you can bolt a vice onto a workbench, you can get away with get like a piece of 1x12, some long bolts, bolt it onto the board, put some little shim boards underneath, and then you can get some big clamps and clamp it onto your kitchen table, kitchen counter. It is doable. It's not ideal, but it can work. Having a vice will come in handy over and over and over again if you're going to mess with firearms yourself. So just a little pro tip from your Uncle Wildo there. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to throw this on the table and uh, get after it. And I'll see you back in one second. All right, so I've got a three quarter inch wrench. You can also use an AR tool with the appropriate slot there. And I've already cracked this loose. I did not use any rock set or Loctite or anything on it because I had a pretty good feeling when I put this together that I would be changing, or at least wanted to have the option to change out the muzzle device easily. So I've already cracked this loose and we'll just roll it off. Remove the spent crush washer and hit it with just a dab of some Ace High Gun Elixir and brush it off just to get the grooves nice and clean and put the fresh crush washer on. The new Yankee Hill muzzle device. Get it nice and 
firm. If I wanted to be really anal, I could put a little tape around here just to protect this. This was a fairly inexpensive muzzle device, and it's a phosphate coating. It's, you know, it is what it is, so I'm not going to sweat it too much if I gimp it a little bit. But I'm just going to give it a nice firm amount of pressure, and then I'm going to roll it back. And hit it again. And I'm going to roll it back. And it looks like that's going to clock one more again. Let's go ahead and do, backed it off again, and we'll do one more. Because what I want is the prong to be at the 12 and 6 o'clock, like so. So that way my ports are firing at kind of 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And was that four o'clock and eight o'clock or something like that? Uh, other idea being, I don't want the six o'clock to be an open port. If I ever have to go prone with this, I want to. I don't want the <laughs> blast going directly into the dirt. This really isn't a, a being a pistol. It's not something I'm really planning on shooting from the prone very often. But and with these with this design, it's still going to kick up a lot of dust. But Everything is trade-offs, so everything is a trade-off. Yeah, words are hard. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Main point there being crank it down, back it off, crank it down, back it off, crank it down, back it off. And there we go. All right, and that's it. Notice I, again, did not use any rock set or Loctite or anything because I may be changing this out again. And so for an update on how it actually performs, it's going to be a little tricky because I don't really have an effective place to shoot in the evenings. It's the middle of summer. The days are long. Uh, but I will try to get over on an, at least an overcast day to my outdoor range. And it does have a big old awning, so I might be able to get some decent footage. Curious to see myself. It'll be a minute. Hopefully the, one day this week. And I'll have a part two follow-up to this video and let you know how that plays out. We will see. Until next time, thanks for watching. Be easy, y'all. And it's part of a pattern. There's a consistent pattern when it comes to drug use that in almost every single instance, Congressman O'Rourke supports more of it.